Well, hello. <laughs> I'm Mick Taylor. <laughs> and I'm... Mick Pete, Taylor as well. Peter Honor. Hi, <laughs> uh, Welcome to Guitar Parodies on Anderson's TV. Behold these two amplifiers. One of which, probably a little bit inspired by the other. Roland Blues Cube Hot... Hot. Psst. Psst. And uh, <laughs> uh, Fender Hot Rod Junior Mark III. Yes. Exactly. One Blues Junior. Blues Junior. Yes. One is a tube amp, and the other one is a solid state amp. Yeah, I think it's probably fair to say that the uh, the Blues Junior here is probably the most popular small wattage valve amp. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Of it all, is. it's been it's been around for a few years in different. Uh, Variants. It's currently in its version three. Version three. Um, and you see them everywhere. You see them on concert stages. Jeff Beck yeah. was using them, a couple of them on uh, this year's Hootenanny with Jules Holland. Yeah. It's a it's a small professional tube amplifier. Which is also an affordable way of getting into a tube amplifier. Yeah. And the other one is completely the opposite. It's 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 there's no tubes in there. It is a solid state amp. It is a digital reverb. Um, and it's got a USB out, so you can record into your into into your computer and all this different stuff. So it's a um, it's it's a more I, I wouldn't say bedroom amp because it's still loud. It's mm. got four. It's it, it's it is more in this amp than there is in this amp. But I think you can put more in it because it's uh, in terms of features. Yeah, in terms of features. Yeah, the features out. What have we got? We yeah. got 0.5 watts, 5 watts, 15, 15 watts, and, and 30, 30 watts. watts. This is only 15 watts. Yeah. So, you know, this one goes up to 30 watts, which is, you know, gives you more headroom. But I think it's important to say, lest we get into the whole discussion about what's what's and how loud are they, because we've what's all what's... heard a 15 watt valve amp outshout a 100 watt digital modeling amp. I've heard that many yeah. times, yeah. just because of the way they put the power across. So try not to get hung up on the numbers. Exactly, 100 watts. It, there's, what, there's, a, there's a reason why they put in 600 watts uh, power sections, uh, class C, into, you know, various modeling. Uh, Kempers and all of this yeah. different stuff because they need the power to to get that sort of sound out. Yeah. But um, I, I can imagine the comments section is probably going crazy at this point with all sorts of clever people quoting physics and what's a what's and you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the fact is, uh, let's boil it right down to basics. We've heard 15 watt amps that sound really, 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 really loud, yeah. uh, and 100 watt amps that sound less loud. So yeah. frequencies, all of that. Don't get. I think I think it's it's a lot about what you hear with your ears. You know what I mean? It's perception. It, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, yeah. you know you can t talk about modeling, and this is a form of profiling, modeling kind of thing. You know, tube. it is. It's the tube logic technology. technology, and it is basically trying to recreate a, an old tweed era mm. amplifier. If you're wondering what I'm pointing at, it's uh, we've got a board with a few things on it because uh, my brain is unable to retain <laughs> that level of information. <laughs> there is a lot to know. I'm not Lee, basically. His, his brain retains that information. It's like this big. Mine, mine less so. So yeah, yeah, tube logic technology yeah. is what... And it's uh, a cut, exactly, what, they, what they've managed to put in here, which is, uh, you might have heard of the... Uh, Eric Johnson had a, a one where they can put in uh, the little tone capsules and all that stuff. Actually, I don't know if this one has that. I don't think it does. You've just complicated things, Pete. Now I'm gonna have to check. You know what, there's not much in here at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's stop talking about it. Everyone knows what they are. Yeah. I'll just quickly sit down with your gold guitar, Mr. Yeah. Disco. Uh, I'm just going to mention also that Roland has, has designed the speaker. Uh, specifically voiced for the amp because it is not a tube amp so they had to come up with something so it's a I think it's an 80 watt um, amp uh, speaker in there so it's it can take more power features on the amp on the top of them and you've got same features on both of them so you've got treble mid bass reverb on this one over here you've got foot, foot switchable boost and a foot switchable tone 
which gives presence in the tone. The other one, the boots sort of crunch up, so you can. It's like yeah. you're having a pedal, you know. Uh, this one has a fat switch, um, which is kind of a boost as well, isn't it? Yeah, a bit, bit gainier. A bit gainier, yeah. So that's that's what it is. Um, I think we should listen to them. Yeah, yeah, actually, let's see because it. that's what it's all about, isn't it? So when the video opened up, I was playing G chords. A G chord uh, across the two amps. Um, should we do that again? Yeah. To kick off. So, so we've got some A B switching gear down here. So basically, we can switch uh, some layer stuff. We have got a super overdrive, Vasa Craft uh, in here as well. So in case we need it, we can try to kick that in. Um, yeah, I think it's important. Yeah. So we got A B, and then we can A B the amp. So yeah. Uh, and just. For everyone's information, the preamp gain, the volume, as it were, is set pretty much straight up on both amps. Yeah. We won't. We're not saying that the positions of the amps make the amps sound the same. Of course, they don't. So we'll just exactly. You have to tweak it to yeah, make yeah, it sound. Yeah. Uh, also, we've set on 15 watts on this button because this is kind of a 15 watt. So it is a 15 watt. It's yeah. not kind of a 15 watt. It's 15 watt. So that's it. We use the same microphones on both, Rode NTR and a 57. Yeah. And they are set up the same way. Yeah, and just to explain, the, the speaker in the um, Blues Junior is offset. So the Rode NTR is pretty much straight on the cone, yeah. which is, is a good place for a um, ribbon mic, whereas yeah. the 57 is offset. Sort as of a expect. little, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, cool. Right. Well. As you would say, interesting. Well, of course it's interesting because <laughs> what we're what, so Pete and I have been having a play before we started the video this yeah. morning. And what's what's immediately apparent if you want the headline news, it's that the Blues Junior has a completely different way of dealing with mid frequencies. Yeah, it's it's the mids, isn't it? We were talking about that earlier, and it's the it's kind of the mids where you can tell the difference in yeah. the two amps. So let's the main the main difference. Why don't we see if we can dial some of that out and get them sounding more similar? So okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna put less bass on the uh, on the Roland here, a little bit more mid, a little bit more treble maybe. We'll leave the Fender as it is. Yep. Let's try this. Let's try. It's a, it's a different sound. Yeah, it's it's like it's probably like having two different Fender. You can have two different Fender amps that could sound that different. Yeah, yeah. Really, two different tube amps. Or I, I really like the tone of it actually. Yeah, it's it's kind I, of. I think it's a friendlier a friendlier tone. It's a friendlier tone to to maybe the player that is. Um, they, yeah, it's difficult to explain. There's less. You, the, so the mid range um, is less prominent. The vocal mid range is is less prominent in the. In the Roland, which I think would make it makes it sound kind of nicer in a in a more controlled environment. So at 100 yeah. pedals, it's going to sound better. However, that's not to say it doesn't shout loudly because it does. It does shout loudly, and they, and they can actually drive really well when you go down to the 0 0.5. Yeah. So it is, you know, for if you want something that you can take out and something that you can use at home. Yeah. Going from 0 0.5. Up to thirty watts. Let's let's just do that because it's yeah. worth saying that with the one of the reasons the um, Blues Junior is very popular in a live setting is because it, uh, it to my mind anyway, yeah. having used lots of them, it's voiced for bands. Yeah. So it, in a in a like when you're not playing with a band, when you just try it out at low volume, it can sound a bit spiky. Yeah. It can sound a little bit unfriendly. It can sound yeah. a bit thin. I unless they're sat really well on the floor. Yeah. They can sound a bit thin. Yeah. But actually, once you get them working in a band, that's where they start to... Drums, bass, yeah. whoever's doing stuff. Yeah, piano, <laughs> saxophone. <laughs> right, let's do... Let's, okay, uh, he'll play in a minute, I promise. But let's... Um, so let's do what you're saying. Let's get a bit of overdrive up, shall we? So do you want to gain it, put it down on like 10 or... Uh, yeah, okay, let's put it down to... 0.5 or 5? Five? 5 watts. Let's 5, five watts. watts. Get a bit of gain up. Yeah. See what's 
what's nice about that is it's got a, it definitely has some natural compression yeah. under the under the exactly. under the fingers, which is unusual for. But uh, yeah, because we talked about that before. We know, we know, we, you know, that's that's the that's sort of this the, the the way you feel an amplifier and a guitar and an amplifier is very important, I think, for players. Uh, that's we talk a lot about that, don't we? You know, yeah. How you feel the same with pedals and stuff. How you feel them when you. Oh, it's difficult to explain, but well, the, you, you know what I mean, probably. I'll, if I'll you, try and say that yeah. on the front of the note, you just get a bit of um, sag into the note, which yeah. is what you want out of a, a crank valve amp. Yeah. Let's um, let's so put this on the fat then. Yeah. And just turn the volume down. We can't switch the power mode down on this one because it doesn't have a power switch mode. But if we turn the master volume down, and I've got the preamp gain up, and I've engaged the boost mode. Are you ready? <laughs> Deliberately on the neck pickup of the strut here, hitting yeah. the strings nice and hard because yeah. that's, to me anyway, that's where you get the feel of how the thing compresses. Yeah, but that is, it's actually that it's, it just sounds different, doesn't it? It's not that it sounds it sounds good, but different. It's just different. Oh, I like it. that's a very usable sound. I mean, it's a very recordable sound. I would yeah, say definitely. Um, so There's nothing wrong with that. Let's uh, <laughs> let's all... we'll keep this keep the settings exactly the same. Okay. Let's, let's try this. <laughs> Feedback from there. See, again, interesting. Not bad. Both both amps. I mean, obviously. Pete's proximity to each amp is slightly different, so yeah. the frequencies of feedback you were getting there will be different, but that heads into nice musical feedback in the way that that does. Interesting. <laughs> so as well as the boost, the other thing you can get off the foot switch, as we said, was the tone button. Tone, yes, which should add more presence. Um, let's try on the uh, 335 for the clean. Definitely, definitely out of different more more presence. Single coil. So let's let's get some gain on and see what that I, that guitar's got so much more beef than this. Really pushing. You can turn it down if you like. Interestingly I mean, yeah. enough, it's really pushing the amp into kind of a natural overdrive. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. So let's dial in some overdrive then and yeah. see what the bright switch does then. <laughs> That's where you can really hear it. Yeah. So on the top, um, on the top strings, especially when you've got a bit of gain going, it kind of goes from the sort of thicker sounding to a little bit raspy. I'm trying to think yeah. of a, a situation in which you might want that extra presence. 
maybe super push through something just to push yeah. through the maybe a little bit of a if you put the gain on and then you put the treble on the tone on so you get a bit more presence in the in the in the mix to go through yeah. on your solos or if you've got a very dark sounding guitar maybe yeah or alternatively if you just want really sparkly super clean sounds yeah that could also be a way to use it yeah i have to say having demoed it i thought it would work the other way around I thought it would kind of put in some sort of mid scoop or something. Oh, and kind of instead of just pushing up yeah. the yeah, just uh, stick stick you on. Yeah. Presence, isn't it? Very zingy, very, yeah. very zingy. It gives it just more presence. I think it works better with the clean sound. I think that's sort of that's sort of how I would use it probably. You have a clean sound and then give it a proper sort of Yeah, I think it just goes to underline that there's a lot of EQ range. Loads. More than in that. Yeah, definitely. Um, that, that, and to draw uh, an observation there, you know how you have controls where like below three and above seven, they're extremes and you don't really mm -hmm. use it? Mm -hmm. I think everything about that amp is between three and seven. Yeah. It's kind of everywhere where you sort of would use it. Yes, it can get a bit toppy. Yeah. That gives you extremes beyond that, yeah. which I think, while you wouldn't necessarily use those extremes, it does give you ultimately more tone shaping, more control with, with different guitars. That's let's um, let's try. So on the floor here, we've got yeah. uh, uh, Super Overdrive, uh, the Wazacraft edition, Waza. SD One W. Um, so shall we hear how it takes an overdrive pedal? Let's see. So I'll switch back over to you. Okay. My dear fellow. Yes. Yeah, on this lovely on, gold on the, strat. On the disco strat. Yeah. Waka, 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 waka. Let's try the, the bridge pickup, shall we? See again, now you have to redial in for the other guitar, but that's yeah. normal with, with them, isn't it? That's pretty spiky bridge pickup, as you would expect from a strat. Yeah. Uh, try that, try the other one. I will let you do it with, with your foot. That's. A lot of reverb on that. Yeah. I can't reach it. Can't reach it. It's a, no awkward angles. Okay. I, I mean, <laughs> strap bridge pickup, pretty, pretty. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's, it's really. Okay. So here's a super overdrive. So we're. A little bit top endy there. Uh, let's try but, some more. Uh, and yeah. This is all kind of on uh, what is it like eleven o'clock ish? Yeah. So looking at my watch, going <laughs> it's about eleven o'clock. No, it's not eleven o'clock. It's nearly lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> to listen now because I can't tell the difference but here where I'm sitting yeah how weird I, is that apologies for the ugly guitar playing but I think the more you that was lovely the more you um the more you hit an amp and make it kind of yeah. find all the discordant bits and the bit where it doesn't want to sing beautifully yeah is, is the bit where you really start to hear the difference that's it so Pete why don't we hear some overdrive from the pedal with let's the, do it with let's the get a clean let's get a clean a clean yeah. so we'll keep the amp exactly the same <laughs> What was all that about? <laughs> <laughs> 
Right then, I actually prefer that tone with that and this and that and this, this. Yeah, I think that the, you know what I'm saying. The conclusion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> the, conclusion no the conclusion from that is there's enough uh, EQ variance in the in this to be able to dial it to dial it pretty close, which is not always the case. I don't think. Let me just try that again because that was. Uh, let me just see. <laughs> It is a difficult one. Wow. I think I think I'm hearing a tonal envelope in this, which has definitely got that kind of very sizzly high end and lots of bass, and it has a mid character that's quite different from uh, yeah, very from isn't the it? Fender. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we should do is turn them up. I don't know without the without the pedal. Without the see, pedal, let's get happens. some volume going. Yeah. And you might have to. I'll have a look and Pete see. Pete might if need to ride the input volumes on the mics here, but if it spikes or yeah. whatnot, it should be all right. Yeah. Should be fine. Right, so we're back. Pete's just been off to tweak the uh, input levels on the mics because of the volume that we're playing We've at. We've turned it up, baby! So let's start with the Fender. Fender! So this one is, they handle, I mean, so they both flab out in the bass. Yeah, you there's can, some flap, there's, you can definitely hear there's some yeah. flappy stuff going on in the speaker, maybe there's a cones or the cardboard, whatever, but yeah. there's something going, oh, mummy, mummy, mummy. This. In, a, in them both. <laughs> but this is an open back cab as well. They're both yeah. old school open cab. But it's loud. It's I mean, really it's, loud. It's proper loud. Yeah. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> I mean, what, the other, other interesting thing to mention is if you've ever had a valve amp, um, I've been playing valve amps for <coughs> years, <laughs> years, and uh, so have I. Just... In, in that whole time, I've, I think I've only ever had had them go wrong, and they usually go wrong within about the first ten seconds of turning them on. Yeah, and it's normally the tubes, isn't it? It's yeah, normally so the power tubes. Biggest, biggest reliability issue in all valve amps is a valves. Yeah. Uh, especially rectifier valves. Yeah. This uh, doesn't have that. That's a solid no, state. No, no, no. So yeah, you yeah. kind of. And b reverb trays. Yeah. So um, lots and lots of uh, amps that use that particular spring reverb tray, and there have been some really not very good ones in the last few years. Yeah. The reverb trays go. I mean, I've had them go on fenders. I've had them go on messers. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they, you know, they, it's 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 a very a tube amp is a very delicate. Yeah. Creature. Yeah. And you know, yeah. As if it's, right on as, cue. As if right on cue, it's going. It's going. And it's it's. You know they've 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 done some stuff to to update the the, the third version of this, yeah. you know, the third uh, incarnation or whatever. So they've done the tubes, they put different things in there so they don't rattle as much. You know we know that yeah. that fenders have a thing for for rattling tube or rattling. Part of the sound, it, man. It, it's just what it is. <laughs> but it, they just have that sound. As I say a lot, I say a fender into a fender. It just sounds yeah, great. Yeah, but yeah. actually, a fender into a blues yeah. cube sound what? great as well. There's one more sound I want to do. I want to get the, I want to get the Duesenberg and do like a kind of a clean Duesenberg with the uh, with the old wanger. <laughs> as you said, as, as guitar, mother, as guitar experts, is the, is the, is the, is the term with the term. wanger. So uh, so I'll get the wanger out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. have that.
Well, nothing wrong with that. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so here we are with the um, Ducey. Remarkably in tune, Duesenberg. What's this? Star player? Star player. Yeah. TV. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, I'll turn the input volume up to maximum and the master down low. Yeah. Then you get this. And if you reverse that. Uh, Reverb is nice. So master yeah. goes up nice and high, volume right down low. Having said that, that was still with the gain down uh, in the in the blues cue, so uh, the master was the master was really driving that. So yeah. I'm surprised. Yep. <laughs> well, you know they've been they've been saying this is really good. Yeah. And it is really good. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. I, you can't go wrong with either of them. <laughs> there's, a, there's a convenient yeah. conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have to make up your mind yeah. for what you like. You know, I think both of them are great little lamps. I'm, yeah. I'm, I must say, I'm really pleasantly surprised by that blues cube. I think that's yeah. really, they've done really well on that. I think the breadth, the breadth in the guitars is very apparent through the amps, which again is not. I was, I would yeah. fully expect it through this. Yeah. I expect, you know, a particular guitar to sound like that guitar through that yeah. amp. What I've found with digital amps in the past, or at least solid state amps in the past, yeah. is they tend to homogenise the guitar a little bit. They, it sounds more like the yeah. amp than the guitar. Um, Don't but, forget BB King played a solid state amp. Oh, we're going to get that. Here we go again! Yeah, yeah. This, this is not an argument. It's is not, not an argument with all this stuff. About no. whether solid state or violence are better. It's not, because it's a pointless <laughs> argument. What we've done today is really just run through some basic comparisons of these two, and yeah. this has surprised me. Uh, me too, uh, in a good way, I must say. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind having one of those uh, to do a little gig here and there, a little pop gig, or have it at a home. Have it as a little thing at home, or you know what I mean. You can do both of them. You can have, you can have it at home. You can take it to do gigs. Yeah. Might go and do a gig with you. Might get one of those out. See what happens. And on that bombshell, I you think it's time to end. He said, he said bombshell. <laughs> Did I say bombshell? Yeah, it's because you're Danish. It's because you're. Where are you from, Danish Pete? Daneland. Continent. I had that yesterday. <laughs> that's it's like yes, that's where I'm from, and that's we speak Dutch in oh. Daneland. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, on that note. Yeah, on that note. I've been Pete. I've been Mick. We'll see you soon. See you soon.